Okay, I was watching videos today and um, several of them had long introductions and they are kind of annoying to tell you the truth. So let's see if I can get to napping quickly on this one. Maybe I will. Cleaned up the area. This is uh, some stone from my friend Shirley. It says bloodstone. I don't think I've napped bloodstone, but maybe I have. I'm trying to think. Anyway, this will be, if I haven't, this will be brand new. And I haven't even experimented with it yet. And I don't know if it's heat treated or not. Or if it needs heat treating. It looks nice. It looks really nice. So, I guess we'll see. Now, how to spall this. To get some nice, long, impossibly useful flakes. Just gotta test it out a little bit. It looks a little bit shattery. I'm tempted to take a flake right here. So, I think that's what I'll do. Yeah, it looks a little bit shattery. But we'll see. It looks pretty nice. It does have defects in it. I can make nice arrowheads out of that, little ones. I'll eventually be going to all, everything little, everything little. I can't afford to be buying rock for everything. I can, I can find my own little stuff. So I don't have to spend a fortune on rocks. So that's what I'm going to be doing eventually. Just little stuff. And it takes me just as long to make the little stuff as it does to make the big stuff. So, to make up for the loss in income, I've got to do other things. Like I was saying in my other previous video, I'm going to be doing other stuff as well. Yeah, I can make nice ones let's see how, how long is that where are you it's a little bit under two inches uh, one and three quarter yeah a lot of true arrow points or points made for arrows are about an inch and a half long and maybe half inch wide it's a pretty standard size I think so I can get I can definitely get arrowheads out of these pieces. Very nice material. Now, can I make a big biface? That's a question. That is a question. The question. Because I, if I take off this big old, big old huge turtle back, if I can remove it and save this, for a larger point, it would be kind of a miracle. Or do I want to just spall, continue spalling it down and make a bunch of little ones? Gosh, everyone wants to see how to make a big piece out of an impossible chunk. Yeah. I don't want to waste a piece that was sent to me as a gift. I don't want to waste it. Let's see. I'm trying to, I'm looking for defects. If there's too many defects in the, in the uh, surface or around the piece, there's no sense in trying to get a big one because it's going to end up being that big anyway. And then I'll have a bunch of little shards left. So I'll have a little piece like that and a bunch of shards and that's 
that's less than what I just re got right now. I got four good arrowhead spalls. Oh, well, I don't know if they're all good, but potentially good. Or I get one and a bunch of shards. You know, one and a bunch of these. I'm trying to get a big biface. That's the risk. I don't know. I think I'm just going to get as many small spalls as possible of the arrowhead size. Yeah. And look for the best spots to get those spalls from. Low hanging fruit in the beginning. <clears throat> the bad part about it <clears throat> is the ends keep breaking off. But I still have these That's got issues with it. <coughs> so I might not be able to might not be able to get much from this one that came off of there. Or wherever. Yeah. got a nice translucency let's see if I can get another one in this area I think you can pick these up in rock shops right these chunks like this if you can you're in luck right I went to a rock shop well there used to be one in town where I used to live went there several times and the guy actually had lots of neat nappable stuff in the back but he didn't want to sell any of it and most of it was alibates he said no I collected those years back and now my friend doesn't live there no more so I can't go on that property anymore so he said no, I'm not, I can't sell that but you can look at it because I know you'll drool over it probably thinking in his mind <clears throat> yeah the jealousy was building all right yeah anyway if you can find these pieces in rock shops that'd be pretty cool take it home and spall it get some arrowheads get some arrowhead material I don't know how much this would go for <coughs> in a rock shop Yeah, it's kind of shattery, so you can't really get long flakes from it, but they are useful. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. There really is no formula for how to tackle these things. It's not much use in some of the flakes, although they do, they do look pretty. And uh, I can nap around the edges and it, it can be a pendant. You know, just a, a little piece of rock because of the colors, you know. Even though it has defects, I can still make it into a, like an oval pendant. <clears throat> of course, as flint nappers, we don't make pendants. We make tools. Oh, yeah. Tools. Jewelry or tools. We make tools. Although we could make jewelry. Oh yeah, we could make jewelry all day long, that's for sure. I'm sure all of us could do it. Yeah, it's really consistently end shattery. Yeah. Nice though. Nice. I might be able to get something out of this last P 
piece of core. If I do this right, if I play my cards right, I might be able to get something a little bit bigger than usual. Bigger than what I've been getting. Yeah. I don't know how to play cards very well, so I don't know if I can play my cards right. Yeah, I know. Ouch, that hurt. I didn't want to take it off of that part. I want to take it off of this part. Yeah, like that. It does feel heat treated, that's for sure. Yeah, I think so. I forgot. I already forgot what Shirley told me this was. Heat treated or raw. I think it's heat treat. And for those of you who don't know what heat treat is, just say, what's heat treat? And then someone else hopefully will answer you. I don't want to answer. That's the most, one of the most common questions is, what is heat treat? Other than, where do you find your rock in? Tell me where to get all the rock that I can for free. I want to be able to get truckloads of it. Yeah. Even if I can't nap. Where do you get your rock? For free? Tell me. Tell me like in 10 minutes so I don't have to wait. 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes to send me an email where to find your rock. And I want to be able to get truckloads of it. Yeah. That's the most common question. If I knew where to get truckloads, I definitely would not tell you. Because that, that would immediately remove a lot of income from me if I wanted to sell the rock. That's first and foremost. That's like asking me to give you tons of money. I don't think anybody will give a stranger tons of money. So I'm not going to tell you where to find tons of rock for free. And number two, if I told you and it was out in the open, it would be gone before you got there. So you wouldn't get it. You'd go, it's not here, man. There's nothing here. How long did you wait? I only waited three hours. That's good enough. Four guys in a, in a, a, a truck with a fifth wheel and a trailer be able to pick up, I don't know, two tons of it in about two hours and take off with it. So you're too late. Three hours is too too long. Yeah. Man, believe me, it'll happen because the more I look into these little side hustles, these little jobs that you can do on the side, like flint napping and other stuff, the more I realize that there are thousands of people trying to do it. Literally thousands. And every little opportunity to get material for anything, antlers, leather, any kind of material for these little side hustles and side businesses, lumber, free wood, firewood, they just come up with their truck, with their fifth wheel in their trailer, big old trailer, and load up at the drop of a hat. Because that's how they stay in business. That's how they're successful. That's how they... That's how they make it. They gotta respond to these things fast. And yeah. Yeah, I've been to spots where I've told people that you can pick up some flint on the surface. Yeah, it's just down this way, down this dirt road, just go a little ways, about three quarters of a mile, and you'll start seeing it on the sides. I told him, and uh, it must have got out somehow. Either, you know, I made a mistake and was talking out loud in a conversation at a napping or something. They went and they go, it's not, no, there's nothing here, dude. There's nothing, absolutely no flint at all on the surface. I had to dig around and I did find some nodules under Underneath some of the dirt, after kicking out, kicking around the dirt on the side there, I found a little bit. I said, well, there was a bunch the other day, I guess. The word got out, and someone came in and picked it all up. Yeah. 
it happens. So I'm not going to tell nobody where I get my stuff from. Because they might have, they might have did it to themselves like, Ooh, this guy on the internet told me where to find rock. And he's telling his best buddy. And then his best buddy tells his brother. And then and there you go. Anyways. Heat treat is when you heat the rock. Just a raw piece of rock. You Preferably fr flakes like that down there. Because it's best if you heat it when it's small and then let it cool down I gotta say that because they're gonna think you nap it when it's really hot no no you let it cool down all the way take it out of the oven and yes you could do it in your kitchen oven 400 degrees is where most of it becomes glassy and you can nap it after you've heat treated it so the process is, the way I do it, 200 degrees, stick it in the oven, in a pan. Turn it to 200 degrees. Let it sit there for 24 hours, because that, that way it'll burn off excess water. It'll steam out, but it won't pressure steam, because 200 is a little bit below boiling point. It'll come out, the water, most of the excess water will come out. And then after 24 hours, turn it up to 300. Not all the way to 400, because some of the stuff does not work right. Turn it up to 300. Watch set the timer for uh, four hours. Yeah, I don't know if you can set a timer for four hours. But anyway, if, I, I suppose some turkeys that you cook in the oven are four hours. Anyway, turn it to four hours, and when that four hours is up, you turn it off, and you let it cool for 12 hours. Take it out of the oven, start chipping on it. Sometimes it's really cool. It, it, it did change, it's, it naps good now. Leave it alone, keep napping at it. Don't put it back in the oven. If it doesn't nap well, put it back in the oven. Turn it to, turn it, let's say to 250, wait 30 minutes. Turn it to 300, wait 30 minutes. And then turn it to 350 and leave it there for four hours. Set the timer for four hours. After four hours, turn it off, let it cool down for 12 hours, take it out, and start napping again. And sometimes it gets really good at 350. If not, you got to do the same process over again for 400. If not, 450. If not, 500. If your oven goes up to 500, that's cool. Because then you can probably get almost anything to respond. Now, if it doesn't respond at all and you're all the way up to 500... Chances are that particular rock does not respond to heat treat. All right. So I know you didn't want that little explanation because you're waiting for me to nap this stuff. But I get that question so much. Yeah, I should put it in the description. That way I don't have to bug you with these little explanations during the video. Yeah, I know. I know. Why do I do it? Well, I do it because some people won't even know to ask. They don't even, they've never heard the word heat treat stone, those three words strung together in, ever in their life. So they wouldn't even know what to ask. And they're sitting on top of a bunch of raw stone that they're having trouble napping. So this stone is not good. Have you tried heat treating it? No one's ever asked them that question. And now they know. They can say to themselves, you know what? Maybe the stone I got in my backyard can be heat treated. Now that I heard it, I didn't even know what to ask. And maybe it works. And all of a sudden, they're, they're extremely happy. Their depression is going away. Their anxiety is... A lot less their blood pressure goes down everything's cool because they heard about heat treating from this guy on the internet on YouTube yeah cured my blood pressure problems <laughs> oh I exaggerate so much I know I know
But anyway, sometimes, sometimes that happens. It happened to me. When I learned to heat treat, it changed my entire existence. Because the stuff I was getting was from landscape supply. You know, the landscape material that you find at uh, Homewood Suites, hotels, or whatever, out in front. That kind of stuff. I was napping it raw, just like that. Suffering. After I learned heat treat, my supply of rock essentially doubled because now I can nap all of it instead of only half of it because only half of it was good enough for me to flint nap without losing my mind it, being it being so difficult to to flake you know it would, it would take herculean efforts to flake the stuff I was getting and that's why I developed this behind the knee stuff because it required a lot of power to nap this stone I had. And I was napping little stones. There's no way I was going to get the amount of power I needed to nap those little stones with pressure flaking. And then once I, you know, once I got some experience uh, indirect percussioning and then with the heat treat combined man everything changed everything changed I was still suffering though right so I said you know I'm gonna switch from even though life is a lot better I'm gonna switch from antler and bone and stone tools and switch to copper So even though my life was good after the heat treat and after the indirect percussion stuff, my life got even my life got even better. Even better <clears throat> after I started napping with copper. And then I said, you know what, if cop if copper's this good, what about aluminum? What about steel? What about other stuff? like brass brass is not that great by the way what about hardened steel like can I actually use a big old screwdriver as an indirect percussion stick you know just a big old fat screwdriver it's already got a handle on it like this and it's really long and it's got a big fat spatula tip I just grind it down how, how would that work turns out they work okay Except the steel's a little bit too hard. It's a kind of slippery. So it doesn't work all that great. But it works, kind of. Oh, yes. Oh, I think I overshot that. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. So, yeah, after metals, that was the third phase. I said, now I'm actually enjoying this. Yeah. I do like working with antler and bone and all that stuff, but I have to be in a mood. I have to be ready to put up with all of the crap that, that puts me through. Yeah. And natural tools, you know, the, the, the tools are... Uh, bit difficult to deal with you know what it means yeah inconsistent sometimes they're your friends sometimes they're not you know sometimes you can get really good results with some of the tools but then your favorite antler tine pressure flaker wears down and you start seeing the pith and the pith says I ain't pressure flake in this and you go dang it what my favorite antler tine is worn down what am I gonna do I've tried other antler tines and no one's the same no one's the same as you when am I ever gonna find someone 
I mean, when am I ever going to find another antler tine like you? I don't know. I'll keep looking. But with metal, you know, it's the same. They're all the same. It's like they've cloned. They've cloned everything. So, just get another one. Exactly the same. It wears down or lose it. Or maybe your child wants to take up flint napping and uh, walks off with it. Where'd it go? I don't know. Or maybe your dog. Your dog smells a little bit of the tacos on on it you know from the taco you had a little bit earlier you got some some of the scent on you and you get on your pressure flaker and your dog walked off with it and you go where's the darn pressure flaker <laughs> not that it's ever happened to me oh no that's never happened where my dog walks off with some of my stuff anyway they walk off with the natural tools a lot more often than they walk off with the other stuff. Oh yeah. Oh god, I hate that. Oh yes, I do. Watch, I hate that. Yeah, well that's how far I'm getting. There's a defect in there. So this is how far I'm getting. I can get a pretty good point out of that, but yeah, the average flake is about this big from this ball. Right? Something like that. Something like it. This one is the other bigger. Let's see. That's the second biggest spall. All right, so it's already 27 minutes, boys and girls. What am I going to do? Well, I've got to keep it thick. Yeah, because it's risky. If I go any thinner than this... It's, a, it's very risky. Not only because it's a, a brittle heat treat, but because it has defects. All right, let's see. Let's get the scientific equipment out. Let's get the... Uh, let's say, just say, uh, let's do it in millimeters because that's always easier. 40 millimeters. So that's a width. The thickness we're gonna get a width the thickness ratio all right the millimeters of thickness is about 10 4 to 1 now my average is about 6 to 1 and uh, most artifacts are 3 to 1 or better 3 to 1 4 to 1 5 to 1 better than it means there's it's wider compared to the thickness so this is 4 to 1 right oh, let's see hold on 40 and the thickness is 10 right yeah 10 it's 4 to 1 4 times wider than it is thick that's good you can keep it at 4 to 1 because it's better than 3 to 1 a lot of artifacts are 4 to 1 so there you go this is the preform so I'm just gonna get rid of that little bite taken out of the side there by removing some of this edge and remove only as much as I need to to make it look fairly regular you don't need to take it all down because I still have some thickness I can remove and after I regularize it, it the width gets smaller or more narrow so it starts to approach three to one and then I got to run more flakes across to get it the ratio back down around four to one or maybe even five to one. Six to one is pushing it because six to one is normally what I have with good material. Excellent material, I can get to eight to one, but it's it, it's uh, less risky with excellent material. So that's why you leave it thick with this risky stuff. But it's beautiful. Oh yeah, this bloodstone. That's what that's what she call it, All right? I'm not a I nap stone. I don't know what it's called. I just nap it. I don't speak to the, I don't speak the gemologist's language. Anyway, I can make 
you can still make little bitty arrowheads like they did in the southwest out of this stuff although sometimes it's kind of cruddy but i can make one out of that little bitty arrowheads you can make them half inch long because they did have them that big and i'm going to fill up the rest of this time i have on this video just chit chatting yeah i can make an arrowhead out of that and that this would be a little dark point and this would be a true arrow point if I make a little arrowhead on it let's see I've seen arrowheads that are this tiny that tiny and that's not even a half inch long I've seen arrowheads that size for true arrows and uh, some of you guys dink dart blowgun dart blowgun dart point mm-hmm huh 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 Immediately, when you see that, blowgun dart point. Okay, fine. Maybe so. So far, there's no direct evidence of these being used as blowgun dart points. But, does it mean that it, they weren't? But, uh, all you guys with Indy 500 brains, since your brains are so active and so quick, you thought of that in, in 0.5 seconds. Search the entire internet. If there is such a thing as a blowgun dart arrowhead, you will find it if you have that kind of brain. Look for it and let us all know. Don't just keep it a secret. Okay? If you can't find it and your brain is that good, chances are it didn't exist. Those are the chances. That's the odds. Okay? So there you go. Uh, maybe I'll finish this out on the next video. Maybe not. I got a lot to do. Maybe I'll just save it. Bury it. Bury it under... Under something that everyone takes for granted. <laughs> They'll never look there. Yeah. I, I haven't found that spot yet. Anyway. I don't actually bury these things. That's just what they used to do back in the day. So don't ask. All right. There you go.